Hey mamas, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hustle Like a Mom. Stay tuned as I chat with Megan Murphy, executive editor of Good Housekeeping, and find out how she is bringing more yay into your day. So Megan, you definitely put a lot of yay in your day. In addition to all the things you do here on Good Housekeeping, even today in the morning you were on live with Kelly and Ryan. You are the chief spirit officer of your town yes, in New Jersey. That's true. How do you source your yay and stay so mindful in such gotcha. a very busy, active life? Um, I say yes to what's ma what matters and I get excited about things very easily. Um, I've also really gotten good at saying no. So the things I take on are things that help me fully charge. Um, I like to say I live fully charged. The book I'm writing is called The Fully Charged Life. Um, so that's really how I live my day. I say yes to things that excite me um, and give me little lightning bolts of energy. <laughs> And I say no to things that don't. And sort of, so what is the uh, barometer of yes versus no? Because I think a lot of the moms who watch Hustle Like a Mom, mm -hmm. they're redefining what it means to be a working mom, reevaluating where their career is, where their life is. So how do you determine yes versus no, mm -hmm. personally or professionally? I mean, I think what I really do is like, how does this impact me? How does this impact my family? And I've learned this in very small ways. For instance, like at our school, one of the opportunities for volunteering is counting box tops. I realized that I don't really give a crap about counting box tops. It's not kid facing. Um, it doesn't involve my children. They don't give a crap whether or not I count box tops. What I'm really trying to do in that moment is make the PTO, PTO moms like me. Why the F am I doing that? I love that. <laughs> so so like that's kind of what I look at when I when I look at things like that. Shit. That is not a kid-facing thing that that improves my family in any way. So I say no, and I say no without any remorse and any guilt. I'm not gonna count box tops. I don't give a crap. They did go digital this year, so now I don't even have to say no, but I'm always gonna say no to those kind of things that don't enhance my family or enhance my well-being in any way. Hashtag Team Murphy. Hashtag, Hashtag Team Murphy. You are all about the family. Um, kids are now nine, seven, and six. You are good. You did your. I did a little bit of. I mean, I have all these here, but. Oh, yeah. um, and so you are very adamant. Right now, we're at the Good Housekeeping offices. You're pretty mm -hmm. adamant about a cutoff time. So. When do you leave and how do you set boundaries between sure. all that you do here, all you do outside of the home, and then the home? I'm very protective of my time. I think it's the one resource that's not endless, and it's the one thing that I think we as moms really need to be protective of. I have found for me that my mornings can be kept sacred. Fewer things are gonna get in the way. My kids are sleeping at 4.45 a.m. Please, God, let them be sleeping at 4.45 a.m. Nobody's calling me, nobody's texting me. People don't really need me that at that hour. So I have really found like this dawn patrol, good vibe tribe of women that I, I meet with at the gym. Um, and that's really been my happy hour and it really sets the tone for an awesome day. I'm doing something for me. Hashtag self care, like now yeah. that's a thing, but like I'm doing something for me that sets the tone for my day in a really positive way, makes me feel strong, strong body, strong mind. Um, and so that's like kind of a non-negotiable for me. I'm always going to get that morning workout in. I'm going to get to the office a little bit later. Um, and I'm pretty honest about that. I start my day between 10 and 10.30 here at the office. I start my day at 5.45 a.m. Right. But I start my day here at the office at 10, 10.30. And really that's because I want to spend time with my children in the morning. That means I want to be the one packing lunches. They're packing their backpacks. We're having breakfast together. We're maybe doing 10 minutes of reading time. It is super important to me that I front load my day with my family. I love that. Um, that's like an Oprah quote, right? I would, that's like a little more. You front load your day. Front yes, load my you front day load with your family. day with oh, family. I should write that down. It should probably be in my I book. mean, I think we should. Okay. We should also, I think, make a T-shirt. And then I do. I mean, I get to work, and when I get to work, I work my ass off. Like I don't make a lot of small talk, although I'm pleasant and I might run around the hallways. But I'm gonna get my work done because I really want to leave. And when we're on deadline, <laughs> um, like I'm gonna stay till the magazine gets done. I'm always going to get my job done, but man, I wanna go home. I really wanna go home, and I'm gonna say no to 90% of your evening events, so, I mean, if you invite so me, thank you, but I probably her. won't show up, because I, my family is number one for me. I do all of this, like, I call it Operation Family, Freedom, Fun, and then you need the funds to have all the those other Fs, so it's the four Fs. 
fun, family, freedom, and then the funds to make it all possible. I feel um, like we just came out with a second t-shirt. I know. So I like my friend. I, everybody please take no because we're going to be buying these t-shirts as soon as your book comes out in 2021, which we'll talk about in a second. But so I, I hustle here and then I have my commute and I think about my commute as an extension of my office. So. Instead of being like, oh, I'm on the bus, I'm like, okay, I'm on the bus. That means I have an hour to answer emails, do my social media, and really kind of catch up with my day so that when I walk in the door, I'm home. I'm not on email. I'm not on a phone right. call. Like, I am checked out between the second I walk in the door to, like, put up my kids in bed and do their highlights, I'm not on the clock. And the commute allows me to do that, and I'm very precious about my bedtime. I know what I need. I need about seven hours. That's not good for everybody, but that's what I need. I've learned my body. And I think a big piece of this for any mom out there is really kind of learning you. Um, yes. As a 44-year-old mother of three, I know me. <laughs> and the neat part is the older I get, the more I like me and the less filtered I become. So for the women out there who are redefining and I want to say dusting off, but reimagining what their career life could be, how um, are some of the skills that you brought into Good Housekeeping applicable for a woman who might be leaving sure. a corporate job or just figuring out, you know, stay at home is not really for me anymore, I've off ramped. What are some tips that they can do to reimagine their life? So here, the thing for me is I think you have to put everything through a fun filter. And I think you have to chase what excites you. And I really say this very honestly, like I've actually never had a career goal. I mean, I never had a plan, but I've always been very passionate and chased what excited me. Um, and so I think in any field, in anything that you're doing, if you do it with passion and you do it with heart and you do it with excitement and you find your fun, you're gonna be good at something and hopefully it's gonna make you some money so that you can have the fun fam family and freedom when the fun is to fun do it. <laughs> In 2021, you have a book coming out called The Fully Charged Life, A Radically Simple Guide to Having Endless Energy and Finding the Yay in Every Day. Tell us about the book and sure. the journey to acquiring a book deal. Because I know, you know, even a lot of women who have businesses, yeah. they think, okay, can I do a book deal? What was that process like? Is that process now? Um, you know, for me, the book kind of came about where I was like, I have so much to share and I want to be able to share it in a big major way and I sort of had this moment of like I think I want to write a book um, and I was lucky enough to be able to meet with a couple of agents I signed with an agent Laura Nolan who is a dream she's Neil Patrick Harris's agent um, my friend Vern Yip worked did his books with her as well and you know we kind of just like sat down and said like here's what I think the book's gonna be and I spent about a year coming up with a very comprehensive treatment for what this book was. So I feel so lucky to get to live this way. I feel content and happy and energized and I want to share this sacred sauce because it's not that hard. You just have to train. Just work that way. It's brain. just, it's literally a training regimen and, and it's, and once it starts to click, even a few small changes, you're like, whoa. Tomorrow could be more awesome. I mean, and that's the present pre premise of the book is none of you are broken. I'm not gonna fix any of you. We're all okay. We are totally okay. But tomorrow could be more yay, and I'm gonna show you how, because it's not a big deal. And I think that when you live that way, your professional life and your personal life align. So that's actually something that we talk about a lot is making the choices in your life so that finally, finally, because I think for a lot of women that doesn't always happen, mm -hmm. we are aligning our professional and our personal aspirations and values. And a lot of women that watch the show, they're looking back and they're like, well, where I work right now might not be the right spot for me or what I'm doing right now is not the right fit. And so how can I bring gay into my life and align it in that mm -hmm. way? And I think you are doing that so beautifully. Well, and I think the other thing too is like, I don't want on my tombstone to, to say she got to work on time. She paid the electric bill, right? Like, do you want that to be your legacy? You're spending a lot of time at work. And I am very like respectful of the fact that we have bills to pay mm -hmm. and, we, it, and we have to make those things happen. But you are gonna regret it if all you do is get to work on time and pay the electric bill. So like, how do you live bigger than that? Right? I, I, mean, I gotta take notes because I should put this shit in I'm the book. Gonna, I am literally going to send this back to you because I have at least four t-shirts that you have to sell oh and I gosh. have a feeling that whoever's watching is going like, to want to buy it. Crap, I think I like that. I, that's that a was, new thought. That that's was a new good thought, one. Oh. You definitely know yourself and are very confident in where you are in life. I can't wait to see where the journey takes you. Before we part with the ladies, I would love to know what is one mantra that you wish every mother said to herself? Um, 
you're okay. I just wrote an essay about this in um, Good Housekeeping, and I really like, I was finding that we often say this, now as my kids are 9, 7, 6, I found myself saying to friends with babies and, and youngins, um, little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. And what I realized is that's actually a judgment, and it's a really nasty judgment that says, your problems aren't as big as my problems. And it's like we have this momnesia that you forgot how stressful it was when you couldn't potty train your kid, they didn't sleep through the night, because now bullying and the threat of e-cigarettes and all these other things seem so scary and big. They're all big. Any problem any of us have is big. And valid. And, and valid. valid. And it's happening. And it's a problem, and that makes it bad. So what I really wish that we could all do is just tell each other you're okay and remind ourselves you're okay. Because it's so like, good. I thought of this in the middle Strong, of the night like, when just... my well, my son my son woke up with growing pains and it's like I hold him and I rock him and I say you're okay, you're, so, you're okay. Why don't I say that to myself? Why don't I say that to you? We say it to our kids, but you're okay. You are okay. You're okay. And you're okay. Right? And, yeah. Where can we follow you on social media? Um, I would love for you to follow The Yay List. It's my new account that's just dedicated to The Yay. I really do believe that good energy is contagious, so I would love for you to share your Yay with me. Um, it's at The Yay, Y-A-Y, List. Um, and then my social is Megan B. Murphy, M-E-A-G-H-A-N, B. Murphy. Um, I also do Bestfield, New Jersey, which is my love letter to the town of Westfield, New Jersey, as the Chief Spirit Officer. Chief Spirit Officer. Um, Mamas, thank you so much for tuning into this mindful and very moving, yay inspired Hustle Like a Mom chat. I'm Pamela Peckerman. Do not forget to subscribe here at YouTube as well as follow me at Pamela Peckerman on Instagram and www.pamelapeckerman.com.